Hello again, friends. It's time for our time together at this daily devotional. I'm Pastor Dave, and today I want to talk to you about faith. The Bible seems to put a lot of emphasis on faith. Why is faith so important to God? Why does He want it from us so much? Let's talk about that on Something Deeper. The Bible talks about our salvation being by faith, from first to last. If we want to be right with God, it's only going to be because we have faith in Him. So what is this faith and why is it so important? I like the passage in Hebrews that talks about faith and says, without faith it is impossible to please God because to please God we have to believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. So when the Bible talks about faith as salvation, the means of our salvation, it's not just believing that God exists or believing something about Him, that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that that God is the Father of Jesus and that Jesus is the Son of God, and we believe in that and that saves us. It's not just that. It goes beyond that because first we have to believe that He exists, And then we have to believe that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. It means we trust Him. You can believe someone exists and not trust them at all. But if you believe that they exist and trust them, then you can have a deep relationship with that person. It's the same with God. If you believe He exists and you believe that He rewards those who seek Him, you'll seek him. We have an example of that in Luke chapter 7. Let me read it to you. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion's servant whom his master valued highly was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to ask, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. You can tell that this centurion was not an ordinary guy. He was one of those hated Romans, but surprisingly, they didn't hate him. This this Roman soldier had loved the people of the Jews, and he'd even paid for them to build their synagogue. This must have been an expensive building project, and yet this Roman was willing to do it for these Jews. And so therefore, they were willing to do him a favor and go to Jesus and say, please help this man. He's a good man. He deserves your help. This centurion wasn't even looking for something for himself. It was his servant who was sick. And yet he earnestly wanted him healed, so he sent these elders to Jesus. And Jesus honored this by going to be with them. But the story goes on. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. And then the centurion spoke from his experience, and and he spoke about why he knew that this could, could happen. He said, For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, Go, and he goes. And that one, Come, and he comes. I say to my servant, Do this, and he does it. The implication is, the centurion is saying to Jesus, Jesus, you don't even have to come under my house. I know you have the authority to do this. So just say it, and it will happen. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Jesus is right he hadn't found that even in the people of Israel. In fact, 
I don't know if it was before this or after this, but Jesus at one time said of his second home, Capernaum, that they wouldn't rise up to heaven, but they would descend into hell because they didn't believe, even though Jesus performed so many miracles in their midst. And here was an example of one of those miracles, that this Roman, he wasn't even a Jewish man who could be expected to believe in the Messiah. But this Roman heard about Jesus and said, Jesus, I know you have authority. Just say the word and heal my servant. Jesus honored his faith. He said the word and the servant was healed. This is an example for us. You know, if we're going to please God, we have to have faith in him. Through, through all the ups and downs of life, we have to trust that God is in control. We talked last night about the fact that believing in Jesus doesn't mean that everything good is going to happen. My sermon on Sunday recognized that you can do everything right and still have to suffer. But if we trust in Jesus, we know that it's going to come out okay in the end. You see, we're in this for the long haul. And if you put your faith in Him, you know that all of this life, good and bad, is going to work out for good if you continue to follow Jesus. So let's put our faith in Him and stick it there. Keep it there. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this example and for many other examples of great faith in the Bible. People who trusted you even when it was hard to trust because of what was going on in their lives. Help us to trust you more, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Good to spend this time with you. Love you. Take care. And we'll see you again tomorrow.